Welcome to the physics classrooms video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is the current voltage resistance relationship and we want to know how our current voltage and resistance mathematically related and how can we use the relationship. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. There are equations in physics that are so powerful and so prevalent that they've actually reached the state of popular knowledge. The student of physics has written them down so many times that they've actually memorized them without even trying to. In the world of quantum mechanics, that equation would be E equal mc squared. In the world of Newtonian mechanics, the equation would be F net equal ma. And in the world of wave mechanics, that equation would be V equal F times lambda. When it comes to electric circuits, the equation that is most prevalent is without a doubt delta V equal I times R, where the delta V represents the electrical potential difference. The unit is the volt, abbreviated V. The I represents the current. The unit is the ampere, or amp, and is abbreviated A. And the R stands for resistance. The unit is the ohm, abbreviated with the Greek symbol omega. This equation could be described as saying in words that the electric potential difference between any two points on the circuit is equal to the current that flows between those two points multiplied by the total resistance of all devices existing between those two points. As with any equation in physics, it's important to give attention to the units, the volt, the amp, and the ohms. These three units are related to one another by the unit equivalency 1 volt equal 1 amp times ohm. The equation delta V equal IR is most commonly written as I equal delta V divided by R. When written this way, it shows the two variables that affect the current. The delta V encourages charge flow and the R discourages charge flow. Another way to put it is to say that the current is directly proportional to the electric potential difference, delta V, and inversely proportional to the resistance, R. When we say that delta V and I are directly proportional, we mean that whatever change we make to the delta V, the same change is made to the I. In other words, if you were to double the delta V, you would double the I. If you were to triple the delta V, you would triple the I. And if you were to half the delta V, you would half the I. When we say that R and I are inversely proportional, we mean that whatever change you make to the resistance, the inverse or reciprocal change is made to the current. In other words, if you were to double the R, you would cause the current to be halved. And if you were to triple the R, you would cause the current to be one-third of its original value. And if you were to half the R, you would cause the current to double. The equation I equal delta V divided by R is commonly used to calculate the current. We have six simple examples here. I want you to look in the top table where the delta V and the R values are given and we have to calculate I. Before we go to do that though, I want you to look in the diagram column so you see what's going on. In diagram one, two, and three, there's one light bulb. Light bulbs are resistors and since there's one in every row, the resistance values are not changing going from row one to three. But what is changing is the delta V because going from row one to three, I notice in the diagram that one cell is being added in each row. So the delta V is increasing from 1.5 volts to 4.5 volts. Now let's do our calculations. We'll come back to that pattern in a moment. So in the first row to calculate I, I'm gonna go 1.5 volts divided by three. In the second row, I'm gonna go three volts divided by three ohms. And in the last row, uh, row three, I'm gonna go 4.5 volts divided by three ohms. There's no rocket science to these calculations. But what I want you to do is pick up on a pattern that is occurring here. If I look at rows 1 and 2, what I notice is that the delta V is doubling from 1.5 volts to 3 volts. What happens to the current? The current is also doubling from 0.5 amps to 1.0 amps. That's why we say they're directly proportional. If I look at row one and three, I notice that the delta V is tripling from 1.5 to 4.5 volts, and the current is tripling as well from 0.5 amps to 1.5 amps. Current and delta V are directly proportional to one another. Now let's inspect the bottom table. When I look at the bottom table, one thing I notice is that the number of cells is the same in each row of the table. Three cells, thus the 4.5 volts is not changing in row four, five, and six. But what is changing is the resistance. If I look in the diagram, I notice I go from one bulb to two bulb to three bulbs, and that causes resistance to change from three ohms to six ohms to nine ohms. Now I can do my math. We'll return to the pattern in a moment. When I calculate I in row 
4, I'm just going to go delta V, 4.5 divided by 3, and I get 1.5 amps. In the next row, it's 4.5 divided by 6, and in the last row, it's 4.5 divided by 9. Now let's look at the pattern that has been established. If I look at rows 4 and 5, I notice that the resistance has been doubled from 3 ohms to 6 ohms. What happened to the current? The current was halved from 1.5 amps to half the value of 0.75 amps. We say that current and resistance are inversely proportional. Now let's look at rows 4 and 6. I notice that the resistance is tripled between those two rows, and since, a tripling, since we tripled the resistance, we've caused the current to go down by a factor of a third. It was 1.5 amps, and now is one third of that value. 0.5 amps. In other words, current and resistance are inversely proportional. Now let's discuss how you would use the I equal delta V divided by R equation as a guide to thinking about how a change in one of the variables, delta V or R, would affect the other variable I. We have a circuit that is wired with an energy supply, resistor, and an amp meter, and we notice the current is 24 milliamps. We want to determine the new current if the delta V or the R is changed. And in part A, we're told that the delta V is increased by a factor of two, no change in R. So doubling the delta V would double the I. It was 24 milliamps, so now it must be 48 milliamps. In the second example, we're told that the delta V is increased by a factor of 3. Tripling delta V should triple the, the I value, so the 24 milliamps should become 72 milliamps. And in the third example, we're decreasing the delta V this time. Decreasing delta V should decrease the 24 milliamps. If you decrease delta V by a factor of 2, the 24 milliamps would be half as much. It would be 12 milliamps. In D, E, and F, I notice no changes are being made to the delta V, but the R is changing. I and R are inversely proportional. Whatever change you make in the R, the inverse or reciprocal change is made to the I. And so in D, the R is increased by a factor of 2. The I must be decreased by a factor of 2 and thus becomes 12 milliamps. In E, the R is increased by a factor of 4. So the I must be decreased by a factor of 4. The 24 milliamps must be one fourth as much. That's 6 milliamps. And in F, the R is decreased, so the I's got to be increased this time. If the R is decreased by a factor of 2, the I is increased by a factor of 2. It doubles to 48 milliamps. The harder questions are G, H, and I, where two changes are made. It's best to take each change in a stepwise fashion. For instance, in G, first the delta V is increased by a factor of 2, so the, 48, so the 24 milliamps would become 48 milliamps. But the R was increased by a factor of 2 as well, so now I have to take the 48 and divide it by 2. I'm right back to 24 milliamps. The two changes offset one another. In H, you increase the delta V by a factor of 3, changing the 24 milliamps to 72 milliamps. And then the R was decreased by a factor of 2, causing another increase in the I, this time by a factor of 2. So take the 72 milliamps and double it. You get 144 milliamps. In I, we notice that the delta V is decreased by a factor of 2, the R was increased by a factor of 2, and both of these changes are going to cause the I to be decreased. So I'm going to have to take the 24 milliamps and half it for the delta V change, and half it again for the R change, and the result is I have 6 milliamps. About this time in an electric circuits unit, students are beginning to get a little bit overwhelmed by all the quantities, symbols, equations, and units that they have to deal with. So this slide I'm going to take pretty fast, but it's a great summary slide. You might want to take a screenshot of it when I'm done and just use it throughout the rest of your circuit studies. First, there's potential difference. The symbol is the delta V. The unit, standard unit, is the volt. Also, sometimes expresses joules per coulombs. And there's a couple of equations for you that relate delta V to various quantities of study. The Q being the charge. Here is the current equation. The symbol is I. A couple of equations there, one from this video and the other from an early video. The ampere, or amps, abbreviated A, is the standard unit. It's also equal to a coulomb per second or a volt per ohm. Here's the power uh, equations and symbols. P for power, a couple of, one equation there. We're going to add many more as we go. The next video has got several. Uh, watt is the unit, and then joule per second is an alternative way to express that. Here's resistance, discussed last video, and again in this video, two equations. The unit is the ohm, Greek letter omega. Sometimes it's the volt per amp. And then finally, energy, a couple of equations there. Uh, the joule is the unit. Uh, several other options for units are given as well.
So use this slide, take a picture or screenshot of it now and use it in your circuit studies and best of luck with it. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are five resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each one of these in the description section of this video. You have two Minds on Physics missions and a Concept Builder, great conceptual questioning modules. You have a calculator pad with four problems with answers and audio guided solutions. Great practice for doing the math. And finally, always a favorite, the tutorial section. Use it to brush up on your topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.